I never know how to intro this. I always feel so awkward. I'm like looking at myself and I'm like, just fucking say that you're the host of the Gift to Guy podcast and your name is Gabrielle and I'm like, that makes me want to be sick. Today I've got a chocolate croissant, courtesy of my boyfriend. That was really underwhelming. I thought it was going to crunch. Let me finish this and I'll get into it. I'm still going. This is taking ages. That is dry. Sorry to my boyfriend, but that was a bad choice. I have the most monstrous two litre water bottle that I got off of TikTok shop for literally two quid. If you're on YouTube, look at the size of this. It has like the cringiest writing on it though. It says like 7 a.m. morning, 9 a.m. beautiful, 11 a.m. I love you. I have no idea why it says that. 1pm, replenish. 3pm, hold one's own. 5pm, keep going. 7pm, don't give up. 9pm, peace sign. Complete. But I love this thing. It is ridiculously big. It's like a proper weapon. I could take someone out with this. Happily. Anyway, I already filmed this full episode. I already filmed it all. Literally was halfway through editing it. And I was watching it back. And I was like you're coming across really really thick <laughs> so this cannot go out I can't have people thinking that I'm not intelligent but in that episode I was like oh because I was trying to do my makeup at the same time and I thought this is gonna be so class this is like an OG YouTube video like story time like my psycho flatmate tried to poison me in my sleep and then she had sex with my boyfriend and I'm putting on a full face of makeup and I was like people are gonna love this they're gonna eat it up and then I watched it back and I was like, you can't multitask for shit. Like, you're coming across so dumb. I kept repeating myself. None of the stories made sense. I kept, like, stopping. And I think I just, like, forgot I was recording an episode. Because I'd literally stop and, like, do my eyebrows for, like, a good solid five minutes. And then just randomly say something that had nothing to do with the previous thing I was saying. We're starting again. And then I thought, why the hell not ask people their own stories? So I reached out to the listeners. I sound like such a dick. But I have listeners, guys. I have listeners. I've I've not got a fan base. <laughs> I've not got a fan base. But I do have listeners. And you guys pulled through. Like, I've not read any of them yet. The only one that I've read is about diarrhea. So you're in for a treat. I need to explain what I'm even talking about. Sorry, let me get to the get to the point of this. So I'm gonna be discussing mental raj hospitality retail working with public stores because they are some of the most insane stories ever like I love watching people talk about it on TikTok and all that I, I love TikTok I do I love it I know everyone does but no one likes to admit it I love it probably need to take a wee break from it but oh, some of the stories on there especially that pesto girl where she's like call me crazy but I hate store-bought pesto I never ever will skip over those they are so good and they're literally insane it's like someone shat in my McDonald's cup and all that stuff I love it I live for it but anyway I'm gonna be talking about that because I've lived so many lives like I can't believe I'm, I'm about to be 23 in a week but I can't believe some of the stuff that I've experienced in hospitality genuinely like and even retail as well like I was talking to my boyfriend about it and he was like that like you've been through some weird shit but he thinks it's because I'm a girl which honestly makes sense I feel like girls experience a lot more weird shit than guys do so I can't wait to dive into it because some of you sent me juicy messages like I've got like at least 30 responses which I really wasn't expecting because for a good 20 minutes I mean which is hardly any time at all only one person replied and it was my like best friend <laughs> and I thought no one gives a shit no, no one cares stop the podcast delete it just delete all your social media and like move somewhere remote because no one likes this and then they all came flooding in so I got really validated by that <laughs> I think this is going to be really juicy I'm really excited and I really want to read them all but I'm wanting like my first reaction because when I read the diary I was like stop drop your phone leave it react on camera so here we are <laughs> Before we get into the listeners' juicy, juicy stories, I need to quickly tell you a story about how my bosses brought me to a gentleman's club and paid for us to have lap dances. Who's not hooked by that? Wait till you hear this. It's fucking mental. So basically, 
I used to work in this restaurant in Edinburgh and that's all I'm going to say about it because if I said it anymore it would be so obvious and I'm low-key scared of these people that they could probably come after me for this uh, or like sue me I don't know and I had to pay 168 quid in taxes the other day I got some random letter through the door and I don't have any money left after that so we're keeping this really vague anyway I used to work in this restaurant in Edinburgh I started working there when I was 18 because I remember the people that worked there came to my 19th birthday and this restaurant was just like a bunch of young people that worked there do you know what I mean like students yeah mostly just students um and like we must have had like raised from the age of like 18 to like 26 so a group of young people and they, we were all not we why am I saying we they were all shagging each other I did not shag anyone there um but they were all like sleeping with each other it was very like incestuous and it was kind of like my life for a while you know when you just get so heavily involved in a place that just becomes your life and I wish I hadn't because fucking hell like this is just one of many stories from that place <laughs> anyway so the people working there first off I'm just gonna say side note the manager and the supervisor there were so slimy and gross and creepy and I really hope I never see them again and if I do probably won't say anything so this restaurant I worked for was owned by like a huge family like a bunch of brothers and sisters and one of the girls in the restaurant decided that she was going to have a big birthday night out and all the girls in the restaurant were invited and we were going to go through to Glasgow so we come through to Glasgow we've rented an Airbnb and everything and we are literally dressed up tonight I got my makeup done and I looked awful <laughs> like no shade to the makeup artist I just think I, I had such a baby face back then that I just looked like a 14 year old that was trying to get into a club like I just looked shit and I was also dyeing my hair black at the time which just did not suit me it washed me it made me look really ill like it was not a vibe and I found a picture of it not that long ago and I was like you pay like 50 quid for that <laughs> it was not good anyway so we're all like dressed up I was wearing like heels and a dress like it was dress up dress up and we we head out and we are getting drunk like set the scene right we're getting drunk we all look hot apart from me who looks like a little girl we're excited we're having a good time we're in a cute wee bar in Glasgow and then all of a sudden two or three of the brothers I don't remember uh, of the family walk in and we're like oh for fuck's sake because none of us really liked them they were weird like they were they, they had wives and kids and they were always weird you know and they walked into this bar which is like why are you here why are you not at home with your wife and kids and they see us and they come over and honestly to this day I'm not convinced that it was just by chance that like they happened to be there like I think they knew that we were going out in Glasgow because it was just too much of a coincidence to be honest and um, so they are buying us drinks and I'm like you can buy us drinks but yeah after that you need to fuck off uh, and next thing you know we're all so drunk and they're taking us into a gentleman's club I can't remember for the life of me I must have been on another level because I really I can't really remember much all I remember is us outside of this gentleman's club which obviously by like the name of it a gentleman's club women don't go in there women do not they're not supposed to go in there because it's a gentleman's club uh, next thing you know we're all heading in with these guys there must have been like eight or nine of us I don't really remember but there was a, there was a fair few of us we're heading in and like we're a lot of us like the majority of us are like in a corner like why the fuck are we here this is really weird they're buying us drinks and everything they're like one of the girls one or two of the girls ended up getting lap dances that they were paying for like getting taken into the back they're asking me if I want a lap dance I'm like I'm okay thanks I'm okay you keep your money and buy yourself something nice maybe for your kids perhaps weird vibes the gentleman's clubs feel like really creepy people the strippers were lovely I spoke to some of them in the bathroom they were they were very lovely lovely girls and they were confused as to why they, we were here too they were low-key like why are you here like it's like weird and I remember one of them saying it's actually not great for our, like our business because these men in the club are just coming to speak to you rather than like talking to us and I was like that's a very good point because why the fuck are we here it was just overall just so weird and I don't really remember, like, I remember them trying to get some of us to, like, sit in their laps and stuff. It was just such a weird, 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 weird night. And 
at one point something happened again I must have been so drunk because I really don't remember something happened there was like some sort of fallout with like one of the brothers with one of the girls and we ended up leaving and the next day the manager of like my restaurant ended up quitting because that was his girlfriend that he was weird to it was so bizarre and honestly after that night I couldn't stand the place it just got so weird and there was like a um Christmas night out or something they had some sort of like night out for the restaurant like again in Glasgow and like they'd rented out this restaurant for us and stuff it was just so weird like it was they were just such a weird group of people and like the fact that they'd invited in their workers who were between the age of like 18 and like 26 like to a gentleman's club with them when they must have been like their 40s or 50s with wives and kids It's, like, looking back on that, I'm, like, at the time, I was, like, ha, this makes for a great story. And now I'm, like, that was really fucked. <laughs> that was so fucked. Uh, it was actually a couple of days before lockdown that I ended up quitting because one of the girls ended up having COVID um, and everyone was freaking out because, obviously, back then, it was, like, oh, my God, there's going to be a zombie apocalypse. Who knows what's going to happen? And one of the girls was really hungover and she'd come straight from a night out into work and... Like, she pretended she was ill, so she got to go home during this whole, like, COVID thing. And, I uh, like, they brought in, like, a new person. So I was having to, like, train up this new person while, like, run the floor. And I'd never worked in the bar before, so I was getting screamed at because I didn't know how to make a fucking milkshake. And I just turned to, like, because one of the bosses ended up coming in, and I went, I'm really sorry, but I'm actually going to leave. Like, I can't stand working here anymore. Like, this is just not what I signed up for. You treat us so badly. Like, I just can't stand this place like I'm leaving and he just said okay and I was like oh well fine see you later and they still furloughed me they still furloughed me and I really don't know why I'm low-key like was that hush money they keep me from talking about all the fucking weird things in that place I'm not even scratched the surface with how weird that place was but again I'm not here trying to catch a lawsuit or like get into trouble anyway so I'm gonna keep my mouth shut uh but yeah overall fucking weird place weird place and that like probably that's like the worst experience that I've had in hospitality apart from like actually I did get stalked once (laughs) so that was that was probably worse or maybe like on the same level yeah probably on the same level I've actually talked about this before but I got stalked on my first job I was working in I mean this isn't really this big of a deal but I was working in route one I have talked about this um and I was working route one which if you don't know what route one is it's like a skateboarding shop it's I'm saying skateboarding shop like I'm cool I never skateboarded in my life I don't know anything about it I was hired there because I was a girl and they didn't have any females working there so they were ticking a box um so yeah I got stalked by this guy when I was 16 who basically came into the shop wouldn't leave me alone he must have been in his like 40s or 50s and he really wanted to take me out on a date and I was like I've got a boyfriend he was like are you not allowed friends and he just kept going and then my boss kicked him out and then we closed up the shop and he was waiting around the corner for me and he kept trying to run over to me my boss kept swinging his bike at him being like leave her alone leave her alone and I was like you're a pedo fuck off so yeah And he just kept running at me. He was like, I need to talk to you. Like, I want to hang out with you. I want to get to know you. And my boss was like, mate, leave her alone. And I was like, babe, you are really coming across as a big pedo right now. And it's really not a good look. Uh, and I don't know why we never called the police. Because that was really, really concerning. And my boss just kept like, swinging his bike at him. Being like, leave her alone. Leave her alone. <laughs> it's just fucking wild. I'm laughing about it now. But it is really traumatising. It was really horrible. So yeah, I'd say that those... The strip club and the really inappropriate comments and touching alongside the stalking, probably same level. Maybe stalking a little bit higher since I was like 16 and it was my first job. But the strip club is like very close second. God, what a way to start an episode. (laughs) Talking about all this has brought back so much. I remember there was one Italian restaurant that I worked in in Edinburgh where there was this drunk woman that came up to me and pulled my top down and shoved a fiver in my bra and like groped my boob um when I was 17 or 18 (laughs) and I used to work I used to work in spoons on Jamaica street and um Crystal Palace 
I have no idea why I worked there. I have absolutely no idea why I worked there. My parents were really annoyed when I started working there. Uh, but yeah, and I would get like picked up and swung about. There was a lot of inappropriate touching. The people there were weird as fuck. And there's another one actually. I also used to work in this hotel in Glasgow and this was uh, another horrible place. I swear I'm not the issue. These places are all awful. And there was this, there was another awful place in Glasgow that was this hotel that I used to work in that like punted out at like weddings, funerals, proms and everything. Like the amount of people that were sick at prom. I had someone that was sick on my feet once. I saw a girl slap her boyfriend across the face because like he cheated on her at prom or something like that. People were like doing lines in the toilets. It was rogue. Like it was wild. And you know what the worst thing is? Is my school prom ended up being at my work being at that hotel and I was like out of everywhere that you could have chosen you chose the place where I fucking work (laughs) I did not like seeing my boss he was a horrible little man a horrible little man but yeah and there was another time where there was this like awful rangers themed wedding this is no shit I don't care about Celtic rangers but this was like oh the tackiest wedding I've ever seen in my life and I know each to their own right each to their own but Come on, Rangers themed. They had a four tier Rangers themed cake with the Rangers logo badge all over the cake. They walked down the aisle to the Rangers theme song, if that's what you call it. They had blue everywhere. Like, I'm pretty sure the woman was wearing one of those like bluey garters. Like, it literally was the worst thing ever. And at that wedding, there was this guy. So I was 17, 16, 17 working in this place. And this guy like dropped this little packet on the ground with a pill in it and I didn't know what this pill was right and I pick it up and I go to him at the bar and like obviously there's a lot of people at the bar it's a wedding and I go to him I was like oh sir you dropped this and he turns to me and he goes could you not have been a bit more fucking subtle and I was like whoa turns out it was a Viagra I'm sorry you can't get hard but that's not my issue and he was so embarrassed he was so rude to me everyone at the bar started laughing though uh yeah that place was crazy and then there was another time in this wedding where the groom's brother, who was the best man, was scrapping with his dad, like obviously the groom's dad, like I mean like fist fighting. And this, this is totally gonna give it away, but this hotel was on a hill and they were like literally scrapping all the way down, down the hill onto the street and it was crazy. And there was another time that I found like condoms, I found little baggies, I found someone's boxers hanging up like, so someone was just walking around commando. It was just <laughs> so wrong. Jesus Christ. I'm tired. <laughs> I'm tired. Oh, and on that note, I think I'm going to get in to the listeners' crazy, crazy stories. Let's do it. I'm so excited for this. So I'm going to start with the responses to the question box and then I'll get into the DMs. Here we go. Uh, having to call ambulances for people breaking bones in a trampoline park. I was 16. Ugh. Actually, I know a boy that broke his ankle in a trampoline park and I'm pretty sure you have to like sign like a form beforehand before you go into the trampoline park being like, if you break anything, it's not our problem. And he was told that he could never play rugby again, which was actually really sad. Having to flush an old man's diarrhea with a bucket of water because flush broke. <laughs> that's grim. <laughs> that's grim. That I think that's worse than having. Actually, is it worse than having someone be sick on your feet? Mm, I'm gonna say that that is worse. No, but then again, the sick is literally on was on my feet. Yeah, no, I think that my feet one is worse, but that's still disgusting. My manager telling me he watches my bum on CCTV. What the fuck? (laughs) Had to serve my ex-best friend, best friend, BFF? Best friend forever, slash lover, and her BF who she cheated on with me and his whole family. What? No. That's so fucking awkward. Did she know? Did she, did, well, did he know? That's bad. Uh, one time this weirdo I worked with fell in love with me. That's from my boyfriend. Funny. Working in England getting called a racist for giving a Scottish £5 note when I'm Scottish. Who's the racist? 
What? Working in England getting called a racist for giving a Scottish five pound note when I am Scottish? That, I think that person is just thick as fuck. Uh, no, not you, as in the person you're giving the money to, you're not thick. I went to pour wine and the bloke moved his glass and complained I wasted his wine. See some customers, they've clearly never worked in hospitality and they've never learnt manners, I can't be arse with them. People thinking it's fine to swear down the phone to me because their pizza is late. Ugh. My ops manager had a mental breakdown and took a shit in the toilet floor. Some say it was the stress of the job, some say allegations in the, of an affair caused it. Fuck no. <laughs> Stop. Imagine walking into your toilet and your manager's just squatting there taking a shit in front of you. <laughs> Wait, this actually reminds me of a story. I think it might have been my own school or someone someone told me this story about someone in this school who like they t- put up a camera in like a certain hall and this person just kept doing like a poo on the floor like squatting in front of the camera like looking at the camera and just doing a poo on the floor and they kept getting called up for it being like we can see you like doing a shit on the floor in the middle of the corridor and they were like was it me <laughs> oh you know it's so childish but poo stories make me laugh <laughs> oh this is christmas night a uh, night out with work where my boss had an afters at his when his family were asleep upstairs. That's so weird. It's, honestly, some people that like are in hospitality, like owners or managers, they're some of the weirdest, like craziest people ever. And they just get like so plastic. Like they live, they live for work nights out and Christmas nights out. <laughs> uh, oh, this is so juicy. The head chef of a very popular Glasgow West End venue was caught wanking more than once. What's a very popular Glasgow West End venue? You're you're gonna have to. I won't tell anyone. I won't tell anyone. But please tell me what venue it is, so I can avoid at all costs. Guys, no one go out to Glasgow West End until we figured out who this little sex pest is, because that is. Grim. Someone also wrote, you remind me of someone I previously worked with. Well, I've worked everywhere, babe, so you're probably, but it's probably me. Oh, the head of chef. That, ugh. Ugh. Not me Googling popular venues, West End, Glasgow, so I'm going to figure out where it is. That's grim. Right, on that note, I'm going to get into the, the DMs. And when I've done my investigation of finding out where this place is i'll dm all of you individually and let you know who it is here you go dm mental colleague story once one of my colleagues said she couldn't come in because she was in hospital because both of her lungs had collapsed weirdly she was totally fine by the next day some people are just like full-on liars like that i think that is wild there was a girl at one of place that i worked at that lied that she had cancer or something like that and she just didn't people people are tapped i don't understand it it makes for great stories right but it's also terrifying that's weird that is so weird both of her lungs like that does not mean you'd be dead (laughs) that's fucking wild how's she not is she fired wait was it previous colleague i'm gonna reply to this that is fucking mental did she get fired? Question mark, question mark. Kiss, kiss. Also, should she not have have died? LOL. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> on to the next. Oh, this person's put the name of the restaurant and the street it's on. So I'm going to bleep this out as I read it. Used to work at <laughs> the end of Byers Road and it was so dodgy. I don't even know where to start. One day the fire alarm started going off while it was full of customers for over an hour. So the manager just snipped all the wires and it was never fixed for years. That is so fucking illegal. Used to have to go out and hand a big envelope of cash to a blackened out BMW every now and again. Had a Chinese colleague there who was so racist would just say stuff like, you do realise you all stink, as in white people. And whenever they were, there was any ethnic minority in, he'd be like, if this was my restaurant, they wouldn't be eating here. 
And then my fave story is this nightmare manager we had who was the biggest, most useless arsehole I've ever met. <laughs> one day he told us one day told us everyone is getting fired tomorrow, including him, and a completely new team was coming in the next week. Then we got added to a group chat by the owners who we'd never met before being like, please disregard him. He's the only one getting fired. I've got screenshots too. This guy into the into the Facebook chat. I've been told to not say anything, but it's not fair. So as far as I know, new team will be coming tomorrow to, to bleep the name. Um, everyone else is fired. Fuck knows what's happening. I'm truly sorry about this. Had no idea all the best guys. And this is a screenshot of the group chat. Hi guys, I'm Please just disregard whatever is saying and follow the rota that is posted. Looking forward to work with you guys next week. <laughs> Some people are crazy. Oh. Chefs were so sound though, went home with a massive takeaway every shift. Who doesn't love a sound chef? They are so rare. See, honestly, restaurants of sound chefs make such a difference because I've worked with some psycho chefs. See, in that hotel that I worked in, one chef pulled out a knife from the other and handed them up against the wall in front of my face and I was 16. And I just did the, like, mouth open, catching flies, shook. <laughs> what the fuck? People are crazy. People are crazy. When I worked retail, I had an old man coming in shopping for his daughter for Christmas. I asked what she liked and he didn't know. All he said was, she's the same size as you, but dot, 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 with you know, bigger, and points at my boobs to signal her boobs are bigger than mine. His son was with him too. Ugh! Ugh, what a freak! Oh, oh my god. Ugh! In front of your son! Oh. Okay, wait, hold on, I've got one from a girl I know. My favourite story I can think of was when I was came into my... NEM, lights are off, no music playing, there's seven tourists sitting at a table and refused to leave for about 30 minutes because they were adamant that we were open soon and wanted to keep the table. They came back at 12pm and were raging that a couple were sitting on, tab on this table and refused to sit on any other table. Went over to that table and started asking the couple if they, they could swap and I had to physically get in front of them to make them leave that table alone whilst dealing with a full queue firing through the door and trying to seat themselves. And this is back when we only ran the shift with three people. Some, the audacity of some people. Also, how the hell did they get into the restaurant? I'm wondering how the hell they got into the restaurant. Someone must have locked, forgot to lock the doors. Imagine coming into the restaurant and getting the fright of your life there's just seven tourists at a table at 10 a.m. being like, fucking feed us, bitch. <laughs> it's fucking insane. Oh, this is fat. I need to go to work in like 15 minutes. Right, let's fire through these. A few years ago, I started working in a charity shop in Glasgow while I was at uni. When I started, a lot of the other staff kept mentioning how a certain customer named was going to love me, but I never really took much notice of it. One day, this guy walks in, and I don't know how, but I instantly knew this was sad. He was wearing a My Little Pony around his neck, which instantly put me on high alert. When he noticed me wearing a name badge, he walked right over and said, well, who do we have here then? Fucking insane way to introduce yourself to someone. I said, oh, hi, you must be <laughs> He began giggling, but with no real joy behind the laughter. It was mental. He actually started to have some conversations with me in the shop because I did feel a bit bad for him. He seemed really lonely. He would refer to me as my liege and regularly use other medieval passer, even though he was about 28. One day I got home and I seen that he sent me a friend request on Facebook and I thought, oh, I better just accept so it's not awkward when he comes into the shop. I knew if I didn't accept, he'd definitely bring it up. So I was like, whatever, accept. He came into the shop and said, OMG, so we're friends now. I was like, yeah, I suppose. He then asked me the single scariest thing I've ever been asked in my life. He requested that I come up to his flat that night and watch every single episode of the show Miranda with him. If that not, if that's not cold, for I'm going to murder you and put you in some soup. I don't know what is. Who, if, <laughs> who even watched Miranda? Three seasons as well. I would have been there for fucking hours. A truly bonkers request by a bonkers guy. I declined the offer to which he took great offence. He then began messaging me every day on Facebook trying to chat with me, apologising at times, being angry at other times. I was replying to genuinely zero of the messages and I just blocked him. At this time, he was still coming into the shop, but he wouldn't talk to me. He then went on to make another three accounts, all under weird names like Angel, Unicorn, 
and tried to mail me. I quit the job not long after that and I still have all four of his accounts blocked. I'm not sure if he was just lonely or a total creep, maybe both. I think I learned there and then sometimes it's okay to just not act friendly with people. I mean every single episode of Miranda. <laughs> Why Miranda? Why Miranda? I mean like it's fun in that but I've never even watched it but Miranda not even just one season every episode mental hope he's out there thriving though kiss <laughs> oh that's really weird and also the my little pony necklace that is screaming a lot of things right here's another one i work in healthcare i was in the process of discharging a patient after surgery him and his wife were sat with their lunch in front of them he was about finishing his but his wife hadn't touched hers literally after his last mouthful he takes his dentures out and passes them to her who proceeds to put them in her mouth to start eating her lunch with his teeth i've never wanted to vomit harder in my life that is disgusting <laughs> oh people are so fucking weird people are so weird i was literally just about to wrap up that episode and i just got some voice notes in i'm gonna play the voice notes out my lads okay so i used to work in this restaurant and i used to always be so so hungover when i'd be on shift because like it was when i was at college and uni and stuff and i'd just always be so hungover and then one day was working and this couple were on a date. I don't know if it was their first date, but it looked like early on stages of a date. And I took the card machine over. Their bill was like £101. And I've put the like the price into the card machine. I was like, just check the card. Like, usually I would say, just check the card machine and put your card in. But I never said it this time because my head was up my arse. And I gave them... Um, the car machine he's put his pen in and the receipt started coming out and I just saw the receipt and it said £1,001 and it taken £1,001 off his card like out of his card and I was like oh my fucking god oh my god and I was like oh sorry two minutes like there's been a wee mistake and I went over to my manager and I went over to my manager and I was like oh my god I've just charged him a grand for this like meal are you able to like refund it straight away? And he was like, well, I can refund it, but there's no fucking way it's going to go back into his bank for another five to seven days. And I had to go back over and tell the guy. And I was like, I'm so sorry, but I've like overcharged you. And he was like, no, that's fine. Don't worry, like how much by? And I was like, literally 900 pounds. <laughs> like literally 900 pounds and he was going fucking mental it was so bad that was probably one of the, the worst things i've done um on shift like accidental mistakes that is that's bad that is bad no wonder he was going fucking mental i would honestly i'm quite lucky because if that happened to me my car would just get declined i think i've got about 120 quid in my bank account right now <laughs> a grand a grand oh oh my god oh wait she sent me something else then went on a work night out and woke up in my manager's bed with no pants on and no memory oh the fear actual fear that you'd have especially in, oh fuck that fuck that right on that note i need i now need to go to my job i should be leaving in literally eight minutes um so i've got to wrap this up really really rapid thank you so much for listening um thanks so much for all your crazy mental stories they were highly entertaining i was not expecting so many ones i think my favorite one is definitely my ops manager had a mental breakdown and took a shit on the toilet floor some say it was stressed as a job some say allegations of an affair <laughs> Oh, this was so entertaining. I thoroughly enjoyed this. I'm going to get people to send in more stories. This is me editing for the future. And I had to interrupt because I had to squeeze two more in because these were so funny. One person said, ha ha ha, a girl shot herself with fire water and left like a 20 metre trail poof through the pub. I would have to move countries. I would have to leave. You would never be able to show your face around Glasgow because people would just know. Word, word spreads fast around here. Scotland's a small place. Scotland is a small place. Oh, I just showed you my phone. And then I had another one of walking in to... Well done, where was it? I've got it. 
the way I found it. Walking into the disabled toilet during the staff party and the boss was getting a blowjob off of one of the waitresses. He's married. <laughs> I hate this. I hate this. But it's too good. Okay, carry on. What a day. It is now getting dark outside and it's literally half two. I'm going to scream and now I need to go to work. I haven't even finished my class on yet. God. Thank you all so much for listening. I thoroughly enjoyed that. That was a lot of fun. I need to stop eating this and I need to go to fucking work. Um, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, follow. I hate doing that, but it has to be done. It has to be done. How else am I going to make my millions, guys? I'm jetting off again next week. I'm off to Paris for my birthday. I'm going to be 23 on the 24th of November. Remember that date. Maybe I'll film a wee episode in Paris full of my wisdom of my 23 years of life on this earth. You've got it on record now, so I'm, I'm going to actually do it. <laughs> right, I really need to go to work now. See you next week. Bye.